This is CryptoTube, welcome to the channel. For this, our Tezos staking update. It's been two months since I started staking my Tezos or baking it as they call it over on my Ledger device. So I'm gonna provide an update of that today. And I'm also gonna show you how to easily switch to a new baker using the Ledger Live app as well. If you haven't previously seen my video on staking Tezos, it is just by here and I will leave a card just above in the video now for you to check out for yourselves. So go ahead and do that first. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave any comments or questions you do have down below and then in future updates, I can address those concerns. So we're gonna start off by backtracking slightly and having a look at what is delegation, and how is it different from baking with Tezos? So Tezos has a delegated proof of stake blockchain. That means that the stakeholders are responsible for running the network and maintaining that consensus. So this is an innovation that improves on proof of work as it has less energy consumption and it's a better way of managing security and reduces the risk of having a conflict between various constituents. So for consensus to happen, stakeholders have to either bake their Tezos or delegate them to someone else to bake. Now the problem is to bake your own, you require one whole roll. Now a roll is 10,000 Tezos and at today's prices, that is around three Bitcoin. So out of the reach for most of us and we wanna get involved with this 5.5% annualized reward. And so we have to actually delegate our stakes to somebody else. So the news, the good news is Tezos provides an alternative called delegation. So such as this one, and we're on the Tezos.community page and they provide this service and they've written all this. They've built an enterprise scale baking service that takes care of all the risks taken out of your staking activities. And regardless of how many Tezos you have, you can delegate your rights to them and they'll return to you the majority of the rewards. This is something to factor into who you choose as the baker because the service fee that they charge will vary greatly, but your Tezos stays safe and sound in your wallet, spend them when you want or move to another service anytime without risk. So it sounds pretty good and pretty convenient. And using the Ledger Live, you are keeping these very much safe. You keep control of your private keys. They've highlighted here, never, provide your private key to anyone. This is obviously an essential part of crypto in general, um, but also you wanna make sure that the service you're using, if you went and maybe Googled Stake My Tezos, you may find some nefarious people who want you to actually send their te your Tezos to them, and then they're gonna say that they're gonna give you a reward back, which may or may not be the case. So you wanna do it in the safest way, and so the method I use is probably the best. As a delegator, you're simply assigning your baking rights to the baker themselves. You're not using or giving your Tezos away or providing the private keys. They'll automatically send your rewards every baking cycle back to the wallet you delegate from. And if your stake is small, they may wait until, for example, you accumulate one Tezos and then send that reward on. So these are a few factors to, to think about. Is there a minimum to delegate? Is there a minimum payout level? And what is that threshold? What are the fees they're taking? And do they have capacity to actually take on your delegation? And luckily for us, this requires DYOR, but this can easily be done through mytezosbaker.com, this website. You can find out all that information. So the two bakers I'm using currently are Melange, this one here. And the first thing to note here is this is red, 102% full. That means too many people are trying to delegate their stake. That means when it gets to 100, do not delegate to this. You will not receive any rewards. So there are 75,554 Tezos being delegated to this account that cannot receive any rewards. So they're kind of being wasteful with those. So that is from people not concentrating or not really realizing what they're doing. There's no minimum delegation amount. So for example, if you only had one Tezos, you could actually delegate that and receive uh, rewards. No sign up required, no minimum payout either. 
and you're going to be paid out every single cycle. Um, the fee here quoted 4%, which is a reasonable fee for this service. And they have ranked number 40 and have been running for almost one year now. The second one that I'm using is money every three days. These guys do have capacity if you want to use them. Again, fee 4%. There is a minimum delegation of 10 Tezos, so you have to have at least 10 Tezos to actually use their facility. No sign up require, required. Minimum payout is 0 0.004, so a very small amount, and they're gonna pay you every single cycle as well. So that's just a little bit of background. And if you go onto My Tezos Baker, go onto the Baker's list, you can see all the facts and figures for yourself, but make sure you do actually look into them and see what they're saying and see if they've got their own website, if they've got their own Twitter page, just adds a little bit of extra professionalism and security to it. So we'll jump into my account here on the Ledger device. I've got 160 Tezos in there. So I set these up on the 6th of February. So I set up a test account here and then I put in another lot of 100 and then a third lot of around 43. Tezos Baking number one and number two are with Melange. That is the baker. That is the full pool. And then the third one is with money every three days. And that is Tezos Baking three on my device here. So there was a bit of a difference between them. If I just pull this down and show more, we'll go all the way back to the sixth. So sixth of Feb the delegation started now with this third account here which is money every three days i actually received my payment on february 28th so it took 22 days to get my first payout and that was 0 0.017 tezos so 1.7 percent of a tezos so that's not too bad and then i got another payment from tezos bacon 3 on the 2nd of march and the 5th of march the 8th of march and the 11th of March. So every single three days, that's a cycle, you're gonna get a payout. So that's not gonna change depending on who you use. You are gonna get a payout every three days. However, Tezos Bacon number two and number one with that melange pool, I didn't receive my first stakes until March 14th. So whereas the first provider staking or money every three days took 22 days for the first payment, this one actually took 39 days for the first payment. So there is a big difference between those two. And had I known that prior to starting, I would have put all the funds with money every three days. Makes sense. You want to accumulate as many coins as possible in the short, shortest amount of time. Then like clockwork, I've been getting every three days on that kind of cycle, my Tezos staking rewards coming in. Various amounts, they do fluctuate uh, from time to time, but around the same ballpark numbers. Um, so for example, on the Tezos baking number one, we got 0 0.005, 0 0.005, 0 0.006. Tezos baking two, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.04. Tezos baking three, 0 0.018, 0 0.0069. So a bit of a fluctuation and then 0 0.019. So the figures are there if you want to check them out and try and understand a little bit better how, how the stakes were coming in. All in all, uh, over this two month period, I've only gained 0 0.77 Tezos. However, I'm not really bothered about that. Um, I'm in this coin for the long run and these coins are just sat on my ledger device, safe and sound as they should be, um, securely with me and I'm just, generating that small passive income. I wouldn't even really call it an income at this stage, but I'm looking at this with a longer term approach. If I can accumulate over the next few years, say another 10, 20, 30 Tezos, Tezos goes up in value to a healthy number, say it's a hundred bucks, you've generated a nice little bit of income there and some extra coins that you wouldn't have had that would just be sat around anyway. So this is the benefit of staking coins. Now, as you will notice, Tezos Bacon 1 and 2 have been coming in, but I haven't been getting any rewards since te for Tezos Bacon 3, which is money every three days since the 3rd of April. So I'm going to check that profile out. So let's just scroll up to Baking 3. Okie dokie. 
So this is going to require me to actually get my ledger unlocked. If we just bear with. Okie dokes. So this is Tezos Bacon 3. And as you can see, the validator has no name there, which was suspicion number one that something was going wrong. Then what I did was actually go on to my, mytezosbaker.com and check out their stats. Um, they actually had a tweet, cycle 217, last payout for those still de delegated to legacy baker address, which is that one. No more rewards generated from this address will be paid. Switch to our new baker address. So the lesson I learned here was I should have actually been actively following these guys on Twitter and had my notifications on for them. So that is the lesson that I'm sharing with you guys today to do. So for any baker, they should have at least a Twitter account, turn your notifications on and stay up to date with what they're doing. And then I would have still been receiving my rewards if I was on the ball with this. Go to the little menu icon over here, change validator. You want to select your own because you don't want to use the default one typically. And if we just scroll down, money every three days, then new one is here. 6.18% 6 annual return. There is a small network fee as well. We're going to press continue. And then it's going to ask me to do stuff. Open the Tezos wallet on your device. So I'll open that. And then that's going to load up. And it says configuration certify the address exactly as the provider is on its validation so source tz1 okie dokie so i have to confirm the fee and accept it so i accept that on the wallet it will broadcast the transaction then and then I should get notification on the ledger, which I've got down here. And then delegation transaction broadcast successfully. You should earn your first reward within 40 days. So when you change your actual uh, delegator, your baker, you're going to like start the whole process again. So for me, I knew last time it took 22 days to get those first staking rewards from money every three days. So hopefully it's 22 days again for their new little setup they've got going on and no longer. But it does mean you're going to start that process over. So therefore, you don't really want to be uh, chopping and changing your baker on a frequent basis because that's really going to reduce and harm the total amount of um, coins that you can get every single year. And that ROI is obviously then going to drop. If you on your ledger, if you pick out their name, their validation name on here, if you click onto that, uh, it will take you through to the Explorer and you can actually see more information on them. So this was the legacy address that I was still delegating to. And you can see that people are still on there. So 176,000 Tezos are still staking on that invalid address. And this is their, their new one. Uh, that's been updated and i think this is the reason why they've still got capacity they seem to be a good provider uh, but they've got capacity because a lot of people haven't transitioned over to their new baking address now so that is how you go about making the switch i just want to finish off on the my tezos baking website just to show you a little bit more info and what you can try and read into so you're going to get a list of bakers that are available. However, the first 10 or more, crikey, first 16 have all paid for this premium promotion. So this does not verify that they are the best whatsoever. They've just paid to be near the top of the list. So the average Joe comes along and just picks number one because he thinks it's the number one uh, go-to. You can go to Rewards Calculator and actually compare the different um, bakers online and then you can see if they've got uh, where their fees are which one's got the best staking yield which ones have capacity and these are the things you need to really look at because if they've got no capacity they're in the red do not send your coins to them if they've got anything less than AAA rated and if they've got anything less than I would say 
probably 5.9% staking yield, then you don't really want to get involved with it because you know you can do better. And then finally, when you go and find one, just make sure that they've got either a website or a Twitter account that you can follow and track their information as that is what I failed to do and it's cost me two weeks of staking rewards. So if you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.